I'm Dave Donaldson, welcome to Grip Tips. Today, we're not making extension cords, we're making stingers. So what is the actual difference between extension cord and stinger? Uh, when you say extension cord on set, that could mean a number of different things. It could be an extension of BNC, HDMI, uh, XLR. More than likely, they probably have the idea that you just you need a stinger, but stinger is just kind of a quicker way to identify what type of cord you need. Uh, another difference between these two is that obviously you can tell, I bought this one uh, from Home Depot. Regular extension cord that you buy at like Home Depot is usually 14.3 cable, where stingers are 12.3, and that's the industry standard. Um, another thing is that um, this might not be SJOOW cord. So what does SJOOW mean? Well, the S in SJOOW means service. The J means that the cable itself can uh, do 300 volts, um, can't do more than that. Um, and then OO actually means that it's oil resistant and uh, has some weatherproof jacket to it on the inside of the cable and on the outside. And the W basically means water resistant. If you find a cord that says SOOW, it means that the cable can carry 600 volts. Now I know a lot of people are probably thinking, okay, well why not just go buy a regular extension cord? I found a little bit of a problem with that because when I went to Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that, all extension cords are 14.3 cord. They're blue, they're orange, they're yellow, they're uh, red and black. Let, let's say I have a really big wide shot. Um, if I have this cord, all the way across it, those colors, orange, yellow, blue. I mean, these were all meant for more of a warning sign uh, than it is for film. For film, we're always constantly trying to hide things. And we all know that black hides really well on camera. So you know what they say, once you go black, you, this is gonna get racist real quick. Uh, just a fair warning in this video, I found out when I was uh, editing that uh, I kept saying Hubbard connectors when it's actually Hubble, I'll put a little something right here that you know corrects it each time. Uh, also, uh, if you build it, you know you can kind of save yourself a lot of money. I think their 100 foot uh, stinger, uh, I think a 100 foot stinger usually goes for about 140 bucks and I think you can actually build it, I, I wanna say for like 90. It's probably in that ballpark. There's three different types of sizes of uh, stingers that are pretty much most common on set. Uh, there's 25 foot, there's 50 foot, and then there's 100 foot. Uh, if you're making these stingers, do not go past 100 feet. Um, when you do a 100 foot stinger, you actually lose five volts. Not many people know that. So it's just something to keep in mind. So the best thing that you could probably do is just make a 25 and a 50 foot stinger or a few of them. Me, I only have 25 and 50 foot stingers and I do just fine. All right, so what we have here is actually just a couple of different things that are gonna help us make our stinger. One of the things to look for when you're looking for uh, stinger cord is that uh, it's just 12.3 SJOOW. The other thing that we have, we have uh, Leviton um, connectors, uh, Edison plugs, basically. You got a male and a female end. There's two different types that I've noticed in a couple of different grip houses. I know that here at, in Detroit, for Detroit Power & Light, they have Hubbard connectors and then you have Leviton connectors. Uh, the difference between Hubbard and Leviton is that Hubbard actually carries 20 amps, where this will only carry 15. The Hubbard connectors are a lot more expensive. I find that the female end, I think, goes for about 10 bucks, and the male end, I think, goes for about five or six. The Leviton, I mean, for 10 bucks, you pretty much get both ends. You're also gonna need a screwdriver, you know, your Leatherman. And then another thing that we have is actually a uh, GFI tester, and this just basically tells you if it's wired correctly. Here we go. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go and grab your knife out of your kit. Take your knife and basically go about a knuckle down on your uh, on your thumb and that's going to be where you cut the top jacket off. And you're just going to go all the way around it making a cut and then just pull it off. There you go. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Now we're going to spread apart these wires that are actually inside of the cord. And as you can see we have white, green, and black um, and then we also have these like other little kind of it's like cardboard basically we're just going to cut those off <laughs> okay now we've got both ends exposed so now what we're going to do is actually strip these uh, wires um, you don't need to take a whole lot off just enough on top if you're just using a knife cut away from you and you only need to get a little bit in there and just start scraping away 
at that wire or if you have wire cutters yes you could use those um, I cut them a couple different ways and it's not really like there's a good way just get the coating off if you're trying to cut it like I am right now I just kind of like to think of it like a piece of wood and I'm like whittling away so you're trying not to cut the copper in the inside but if you do it's not a big deal all right now we have this part um, we completely took off the coating um, and now we're going to actually add the ends that go onto them. I'm going to unscrew the top. We're going to take this bottom part off as well. Stick your thumb in. It's a little fussy. Did you say fussy? I sound like my mom. Try not to drop the screws because they will be loose. This one, the screws stay in there, but this one, the screws are loose. And then you can take the back side off. There. Now that's all you have. There's a little hole in there that um, is actually made of rubber, and you're actually going to take these three, stick them right in that hole, and you're going to have to push a little bit, push it all the way through. So now, we need to actually wire it together. Now, <clears throat> in the Leviton, they actually have it a little bit color-coded in here, which is nice. Um, your green is going to be for the green wire, which is your ground. Black, and you're going to go to the brass screw white and you're going to take that to the silver screw you'll see that inside there's kind of like a little it's like a clamp really it kind of moves in and out of there you want to go in in that little clamp in that little groove uh, so here's my black one go ahead and tighten that down then we're going to go to our green which is our ground stick that in there same thing the little clamp screw it down and the same thing there's only one left so we'll put that in there We'll screw it down. There we go. It's tight. And if you notice, there's just enough space so that I can go ahead and slide this back on. Um, <clears throat> there's actually the three points that are inside here, I don't know how well you can see, um, actually have the screw holes there. And there's really kind of only one way this can go back on. See, they all stick up. So you just tighten those down. Okay, so now we got that in there. If you see, you can kind of see it now, there's actually that little rubber piece that was inside and it's like pushed down against the cable, which is nice because now it's it kind of prevents like water getting in really. We're gonna take this uh, well top piece, put it into the bottom. It can only fit one way, so you can't go wrong. And then we're gonna take this other piece, it goes on top and we'll tighten that down. And there you go, one side of your stinger is done. Now, just repeat the exact same thing for this end, because it's the exact same process. <clears throat> and that's it. Now you have a stinger. I know this is only a two-foot stinger. This is a 25-foot stinger that I made, and it's the exact same process. There's nothing different. It's just a 25-foot uh, cord. And you usually only want to make about a 25 to 50-foot cord. Um, the only thing I would do after this is that I've got this GFI tester. Um, so go to an outlet and what the GFI tester will tell you is if the outlet is actually uh, wired correctly or incorrectly. I know that this is an extension cord but it's plugged into a wall. If I plug it in these two lights light up and it basically tells me that it's wired correctly. But it's a really good tool to have. So at the end when I'm trying to test out you know is my cable okay, did I do everything correctly, I plug it in and then I plug it in on this side. Boom. Correct. As let's see, two lights on the right side. And all that was done really just with a knife and a screwdriver and then a GFI tester. Another thing that I did to uh, my extension cord that I didn't really show in the video um, is that I put this piece of Velcro all the way around it. Kind of a good way to, you know, kind of keep your cords nice and neat. Um, it's a better way. Some people use sash cord or uh, trick line. Um, I just use Velcro because I think it's just easier. So this is a pretty common way of how to wrap a cord on set. Uh, a lot of people screw this up. A lot of people will try and grab the cord and do something like this. That's not right. So the correct way to wrap a cord is to actually take it, point that way with the actual stinger, and then you're going to come down a little bit and you're just going to make a loop. It's just a simple little loop. And then you're going to come down the line again 
and you're gonna bring it around, okay? Now I know that part is the most confusing part in how to wrap a cord, so I'm gonna try and explain it a little better. I go down the cord, and when I come back up, I'm actually turning my wrist inward, okay? And once you get good at it, you can start flipping it to one side to wrap a cable. You can get that good where you can actually just whip it around. You see, I just hit myself in the face, that's good. A few times and eventually you'll get the hang of it. And there's another good reason why you would wrap it this way um, that I didn't really say before. Um, it's really easy to throw. Like there, I know a lot of guys who will actually take the cable like this and then they'll chuck it and hold on to this end. I, I actually do that quite a bit, it's fun. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share, um, or do nothing. That'd be fine too. Um, but if you feel like asking me a question, uh, you can find me on my Twitter right here, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.